Now, the Rockies are remote. They're just underpopulated compared to anywhere else in the world that I've ever flown. Check one, two, one, two. In paragliding, there's some really simple rules that you are never supposed to break. Don't fly in heavy wind, don't fly in the lee, don't fly close to terrain, and never fly over terrain where there's no place to land. And on this expedition, we're gonna have to break all those rules. The tiniest mistake can be lethal. Come on. There's just nothing out here. It's, it's just the epitome of, of deep. There'll be nothing for, you know, 50 or 100K in any direction. This part of the Rockies has super thick forests, all these rivers that you couldn't cross if you wanted to. There's just no way to walk this line. You've got to fly it. No one's ever made it through there on, the, on a paraglider or a hang glider, so we don't really know. Looking at the maps, it looks pretty serious. Our mission is to head from McBride all the way south to the U.S. border, and this will be the longest pure paragliding trip ever done if we can pull it off. How this works is that we launch off a hillside somewhere, fly as far as we can, land, find a nice place to camp, and we've got all the gear to camp with us. We're totally self-reliant. Fly again and repeat for 14 days straight. That's the goal. We really want to make the U.S. border. It's a long line. It'll be the longest connected line in the air that's ever been done. It's also one of the kind of like last great objectives or last great problems. Every sport has them. There's only one first ascent of Everest. There's only one El Capitan. To me, this next section of flying in particular is, is one of those things in my local area that just needs to get done. How cross-country paragliding works is we launch, and then we have to find a thermal, a rising column of air. We climb up in that thermal, just like you see hawks do, and then we go off and we glide at about nine to one. So if we can get a thousand meters up, then we can glide at about you know nine thousand meters to the next thermal, give or take. And that's what we do. And if the weather's good, we can go a really long way. The wind feels pretty light right now. You can kick in, push it back deeper into Mount Rosa. Yeah, it seems to be primarily out to the east out there, but uh, what do you think? You want to run in there and have a look, see? I'm worried we're going to get pushed deeper than we want. Yeah, I agree. I don't think we want to get too far. I don't think we want to get east of Robson at all, but we could dive in the front side here. It's the flight of a lifetime if we can do it. Nobody's ever done that. Mount Robson is the tallest peak in the Canadian Rockies, 12,972 feet, just under 13,000 feet. And maybe a hundred times I've driven by Mount Robson, I've probably seen it 10 times. So 10%, you can actually see the mountain. And then out of those days, mostly it'd be way too windy in there to fly a paraglider. It's so big and it dominates the landscape around it so much that it kind of creates its own weather and super powerful wind systems in the valleys. I think we should go. Yeah, dude, I think we've got the conditions. If we can just get another thousand meters out of this, it'll work. Copy that. I'm on a good climb right now. I think we can get there, man. 4,000 meters flying straight toward Mount Robson. This is the dream flight. It just doesn't get any better than this at all. Like, light it up! We're on fire! <laughs> That's a once-in-a-lifetime event. Flying over Robson? You just don't get to do that. We're up at launch, and uh, 
Out to the west right now, it's just going vertical so fast. And when stuff goes up that fast to the naked eye where you can look away for a second and come back to it, and it's another few hundred meters higher, we've just got to hit pause here and, and see how this unfolds. If it's that turbulent and, it's, and there's air moving that fast, if we get too close to a big uh, cumulonimbus cloud, we can get sucked up into it. Once you get sucked up into a cloud, you're going as far as that hot air is going. And then all that air gets jacked up into the sky and it falls out and it creates a thing called a microburst. And microbursts take down jetliners. I don't think it's gonna be a flying day. You just don't wanna be in the air. Ooh, that looks pretty good. Yeah. If you want to do anything in the Canadian Rockies, you pretty much want to do it in the first two weeks of August, whether it's alpine climbing or paragliding. And it's just the two weeks that you've got to go at it. And if we don't get this done by about August 14th or so, the flying generally just isn't very good. It just doesn't work after that point. This should start coming in pretty soon. So this is one of the most important tools we have is, is pilots, it's called a variometer. As it beeps, it's telling us if we're going up. And so the key to this game and flying big distance is finding the part that's going up the fastest, the faster climber, the faster glider. The big move today is this kind of 200 kilometer section uh, across Kinabasket Lake where we really want to move deeper into the Monashies and the deeper line that no one's ever flown before. There's no roads, there's no trails, there's, there's not much in there. Watching. Oh, come on, you fucker! You can't take the risk out of this sport. You know, you're flying something with no backup and no engine. The tiniest of mistakes when you're tight on the terrain can be lethal. Got you on visual, I'm straight over your head here. Good work. So we're about uh, 55K from launch. We've been shaded out here for a good 45 minutes and we are scrapping low. You can see the sea of trees right beside Kinabasket Lake. The only place to land is a logging road down there. And uh, yeah, this is not where we want to be. There's logging cuts um, that look pretty good from the air, and they're, they'd be suicidal if you went in. They're just filled with 20-foot alder, and, and uh, there's a logging road down on this lake, but it's, it's not lined up with the wind, and we've been flying in a lot of wind. Uh, the lake's high. We can't land on the shore of the lake, and uh, it's just a sea of trees when you get down you know, below the subalpine. the landing, I gotta be honest. Yeah, this will be our lesson. <laughs> this will be our lesson, yeah. That's good, that's about 20% of the trip. It'd be nice to speed things up a bit. Yeah, but that was pretty cool, man. That was an awesome day, right on. Good flying, yeah, Super that sick. was good flying. I'm gonna feel a lot better when we're back on that ridge tomorrow. And I think up that's, in the Alpine. Yeah, and we've got 5,000 feet roughly to gain of non-trailed, you know, it looks like there might be a logging road for the first bit, and then it's gonna be just bushwhacking disaster. We've basically done the first uh, 500 meters. And we have a thousand more to go. Right. That looks pretty good, doesn't it? I can't wait to put this bag down. Fucking A. You know, in paragliding, you, you sink out sometimes. You just don't get the thermal, and then you go land in the valley. And that happens to the best pilots in the world. And we don't have that option here. 
So that you start with this huge added kind of load on your head when you launch of, I can't sink out. Check one, two, one, two. Okay, guys, launching. Have fun, dude. started to come on, sun started to heat things up enough, and then the wind picked up, and we were blown around the end of a mountain in the lee, really difficult flying, and then blown into some place we didn't really want to be, and Gavin didn't quite get out of there, so we got separated. I lost you there, Gavin. You doing all right? A wing can collapse instantly. If it loses that airflow, it'll collapse, and it's instant. Gavin and I got separated, we lost radio contact, and I got pushed deeper into this range than I really want to be. I'm really worried for Gavin, you know, it'd take at least two or three days to hike here, if, if that even worked at all, so, yeah, flying is really the only option. Yeah, so when I... I landed, I just came in real hard on my two front teeth, and I thought I punched through, or I, I, I didn't know what was going on. I was pretty numb for a while, but I think it's just a fat lip, and you know, my gums are kind of torn up, but it doesn't feel too bad. I, think I got pretty lucky today. It's the first time I've ever actually crashed on a paraglider, first time I've ever been hurt, and I think I got away. Uh, I had some luck today. thinking a lot about yesterday, last night, so I'm gonna give this place a little more respect, I think, than I have been. Yeah, I'm really nervous for Gavin because conditions are obviously jacked. And I know that being Gavin, he's gonna try to fly, and that's gonna be risky. Yeah, I'm looking up at this sky, and, and it's, it's definitely windy, you know? And, and this isn't a day that I would normally ping off, but I just, psychologically, I really need to be part of the team again. If we're not successful, I want it to be because of the weather. I don't want it to be because of me. Gavin, copy Will. Things are looking really gnarly out to the west. I, I want to get on the ground soon. I've got 20 kilometers an hour wind steady and, and gusts of 32. Nice to see Gavin flying in here, but I can tell conditions are not good. They're really windy, they're really turbulent, and, and where's he gonna land? Uh, yeah, a bit of a serious situation here. I'd, I'd honestly rather he wasn't in the air right now. It was a bad place to stuff a glider, and we're gonna have to keep doing that. We're gonna have to keep stuffing it in bad places, because like, there's nowhere to land. God, man, I'm so lucky to even be, if even only smashed my face. It was so swirly and gnarly. It was just like, fuck, what are you doing in here? Oh, it's good to be back. It's good to have you back. <laughs> that has been some intense flying. That was close. 
this is day eight and uh, not much is going on. We've been kind of stuck here for a few days. The main thing stopping us from flying right now is the weather. It's totally cloudy and it's, and it's windy. But with good conditions, we still have a bit of a problem here in that there's a big chunk of water we have to fly over. So we're gonna have to make sure we have the altitude to scrape around into the sun and then climb out. We have no idea what's over there. It's about 10K over there. So if we go to 3,500, then we'll glide in there at 2,500. I'm sensing a strategic retreat there right now. I'm sort of batting down the hatches. Yeah, all right, man. See you in a bit. Yeah, we'll <laughs> stay in touch, eh? Time for another nap. Yep. You can feel these cycles coming in. We know it's on, and I'm just stoked to, to fly today. Watching. Yeah, buddy. Yeah, boy. Have fun. <laughs> oh, it's so on. We'd been looking at this gap that we, we knew that was the route. We knew that was the make move, you know, for three days, four days. It was like, that's the one we got to do. You know, it's 20K away. It's not that far, but man, it's going to be hard to get there. A lot of water down there. We have to be patient. Yeah. We just kind of keep hitting this inversion at 10,000 feet, and uh, it's smacking us around a little bit, but we're talking and we're like, man, should we go? I don't know. Should we go? I don't know. I think we want to stay out front here, Gavin, and not too deep. Like the uh, goal is basically straight south. If we go too up far up that arm, we might have a hard time getting out. Okay, copy that, buddy. I got eyes on you. I'll push out from here. I'm gonna get this climb and I'll push out. This is it. Crossing over. Last part of Kid Basket Lake. Just got back over land on the other side and I'm gliding into that uh, furthest uh, west peak there. Yeah, copy that. The line we flew was a, was a really technical line. We had to be in the right place at the right time of day over and over and over again. We gotta punch it south or we're not gonna make it. Forecast is only good for three more days and then the temperatures are too cold and the weather's too lousy. So we basically have three more days to get this done. That's it. It's go time. Yeah, baby, come on, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. There it is. What do you think is deeper out front? No clouds out front, so I kind of aim toward taking a, a deep line, at least for the first crossing. Paragliders just don't fly well in too much wind. We have a really small window to operate in. Jesus! Fucking rough as guts up here. And we're dealing with big forces. A lee forms on the backside of any obstruction. But this is a mountain, the wind comes up the mountain, over the top, spins a bit off the backside. And it's this spinning part that's quite violent and, and can be real problematic. If you're trying to fly this direction into the wind and you hit that spinning air, it'll fold you up. Where you want to be in the lee is close to the obstacle. Then you're in that eddy of smooth air behind it. But if you take a big collapse close to the wall, it goes sideways fast and it's lethal. Come on, you fucker! This is officially the gnarliest fucking thermal I've ever been in. I've been down in this canyon, down there just getting the shit kicked out of me. And I'm finally getting high enough where I'm not getting roaded like crazy down in there. And I'm hoping I can get the fuck out of here. Jesus Christ. So my thought, Kevin, is let's top land somewhere up here.
things are really falling apart up here and we need to get out of here and at least give it a go before it gets really bad. We've got Mamatis clouds up there. We've got Virga, which is just rain falling out over there. And it's no good. It may be flyable out there, so if we want to get a shot at today, we've got to go. on this trip, but today I feel like we've pushed our luck too far. Mountain weather always changes really quickly, and now this front is here. It's early, and we're basically done. We saw it coming, and we had a really good window. We knew it was kind of maybe our last chance. Yeah, we've been down for a week in just wretched weather, and uh, we've got to stay in the air all day today because we've got like this one day, and we've got to get 170k to the to the border because then the weather goes bad on us again for a week. So we really we're really running out of time this season. Today we got to go big. It's good. <clears throat> We need to send it today. We know the weather's going to crap again tomorrow. We need to be aggressive and we need to stay in the air for eight hours. Dude, it is so hot. Oh, oh. Game on, eh? Oh, dude, it's so nice. Perfect. I'm above cloud base. My berry is singing. Oh, this is radical. So I'm at 8,000 feet, I'm right below Will. 13K from the border. I'm getting New York tied. Nice climb. I think we're gonna fucking make it. Right there. That's it. Woohoo! We're at the border. Woohoo! We covered more than 700 kilometers of distance. And that's for sure the longest pure paragliding trip anybody's ever done. I don't think any one trip has ever changed my view of the world so much. There's a lot to do now. You know, this is just the beginning. You can go places that you can't walk and you can fly a paraglider through them and come out the other side. All right, where in the world can we do that? And the answer is, there's a lot of places in the world we could do this.